<laughs> so my first poem is about your hometown. So I wrote about Newry Park and I'm from. My three days in town, North London Turf Freeway, where clerks will ask locals about new faces, and new faces continue to the next town. When boredom hits, teenagers find a way to overpopulate the in and out parking lot, where the smell of burnt rubber and cigarette smoke filters the concerns of what to do on a Saturday night. The roads, lead, the roads lead to these middle class prisons. The town is old and set in its ways. Nothing changes. Sometimes when I go west, I find myself near the waterfall, where acorns adorn the dirt pathways and graffiti gives life to certain boulders. The town knows herself, and I have grown up with her. She is a small town, where families find memories and teenagers stay too long. The numerous parks where kids hold stories of baseball and soccer. But when the night hits, you'll be sure to find those drunk teenagers waiting for a problem. Though the only change visible in the night are the stoplights. This town is a place for love and hate. I do dream of leaving her, but she will never let me go. Um, my next poem, uh, we're supposed to pick a random word and then write about it, so I chose the word small talk. Okay, so, branded, <clears throat> branded in the common courtesies file of my mind, I say, hi, how are you, without a thought. I watch the familiar strangers exchange greetings. No stutter with stops for conversation. I save myself from the uncomfortable banter that is so con consistently missed. Why should I stop and stretch my small talk? and all it takes is the drift of life. The mainstream of society always will wash my guilt and ease my flow with this time. Why stop to get to know someone? We all find stepping stones smoother. What's the function of small talk? To count who I know? To avoid getting personal? To evade adrenaline? I don't know. <laughs> Next one. Uh, we were supposed to pick something that we're good at and relate it to how we write poetry. And I couldn't think of anything that I was really good at, so I connected it to uh, catching lizards. So. <laughs> when you hook the neck, make sure the belly isn't red. My cousin always said, red was dangerous. Or so I was cool. Schoolless days, when the sky reflected orange, we set out to capture our blue belly lizards. Hours blurred in its search through the dead grass. Just one sturdy straw was needed to make our lizards slip not. And we went off to start our poetry. Listening to every swoosh and struggle against the tall grass, trying to find that perfect lizard. Getting to know their surroundings, not knowing if we will end up empty-handed or even if we'd like our catch. Roaming through the sound of whistling leaves, the hum, the hum in my ears, and the casual wind chimes dancing with the trees had all had their intentions. Every sound directed our hearing towards the struggle of the lizard, bringing us closer to the central fix of that lizard. Don't scare the lizard, my cousin said. Each one is different, matchless. Eventually, the right one always ended up caught. The more I searched, the more impatient I became, learning to wait and let patience fill my uncertainties. I built a stronger step with each catch. It became easier. It became a comfort. It became my poem. Uh, so this next poem, we, were, we had a list of words on the board and we were supposed to pick one. So I chose the uh, word light bulb. I sit there on the edge of my mind, staring out, not sure if I should look for my answer, not sure if I want to. Everything below my dangled feet is covered in, in a threatening fog. Should by chance I fall into that unknown, maybe something will guide me. My actions have proved nothing. No one knows me at my worst. It's comforting to hop onto this dome with familiar fog. Some
something that deliberately layers the non-visible king in the blood. I wasn't used to questioning those foreign fears. Wandering through my mind, this escalated rock is the only thing left visible. The only thing where I can remember those familiar memories of dreams. Dreams tangled with thought, and thought lost in the fog below. Drinking till I'm warm, and smoking till my lungs go out. My father only fighting with me when I'm numb and filled with liquid courage. I'm lost. Christmas time somehow appears, but while my family is around that Christmas tree, I'm sleeping, or should I say passed out in the Lord's Park in San Francisco with my new friends. A bum schooled me for being white. My world is upside down, but I'm getting used to that view. Blaming those around me, ignoring what I've evolved into. How did I come this way? I was that kid in high school who was going somewhere, that good kid. I am lost. My only home is that folder in my head where I can remember what I had. I sat there waiting. Everything was lost. All my chances were ignored. Sitting on that rock, on my phone, I jumped. Falling through the fog, a cluck of clustered thoughts, imagination, and ambition, my cheeks grew cold. My lungs at ease, inhaling those cool clouds I once feared. I could feel them clearly. Looking in the distance of this miraculous fog, I finally see that damn light bulb. Um, this next one, there's a bunch of photos, and we were supposed to pick one. So I picked this one with these two men playing on the tuba, and there's this old man in the background in the bus just staring out, and it's titled My Old Street. Each day, I grab a dollar twenty-five and change and catch the 7.15 a.m. bus. My seat is in the front left corner as I stare out my window. It's calming to watch my city before the crowds come out, before the car horns yell, before my city wakes up. The morning never fails to dry the streets, see a woman walk her dog, a group of bikers asking to get hit. Every day is the same. The routine never fails me, or maybe I have never failed the routine. Driving through the usual streets as we make a standard lift, my eyes and ears fail to concentrate, setting focus on this unusual scene. Two men pouring their souls into these disruptive silver tubas. Their waves of surprise rippled through the town and broke my routine I had in the streets. They played for my quiet street, and they didn't stop. As the bus drove by, I stared till those silver tubas reflected no more. I was no longer comfortable, and the streets were a shade darker. Hugo's Montana. North, I found your words, swaying the rhythm from local dance in the shadows of hazy landscapes, following the scent of what seems like fish bait, learning how to count the stars' lights that hold the shine upon those rocks and lakes that try so hard to hide. I found those bits of bait that await the hook on your words. I found those bits of bait that encouraged my beat with the faded light. With each catch, pulling the barriers of what ought to be beautiful, you found the charm in the flame. You found the words it wanted to say. I searched for its rhythm, buried in the ruins of bloom, and maybe each swallow inebriated towards those bits of time.